Absolutely. You know, it's funny. So one thing, because our industry in the lending business has changed, because in the very beginning, most of my meetings were in person. Every application oh, that yeah, I was sure. taking was in person. And now we've moved more towards this digital application, you know, take our quick discovery call, get on the phone with them. And within that 15, 20 minutes that we have a client on the phone, we have to basically sell ourselves as to here's the reason why you're going to be using me because I know my stuff. You know, here's the reason why. And just like you said, it's all, you know, tone of voice. It's all like active listening. It's everything else. And so as a salesperson, when you're going over the phone versus in person, just like you said, it's the, the whole world has changed in that mm -hmm. respect. Um, one of the things that I found, especially with this pandemic, too, is Zoom meetings, right? So Zoom me meetings are still that informal, like, person, you know, person in-person meeting. Yes. But also at the same time, it allows for you to essentially read a client. So when you walk in front of somebody or versus like a phone call or like an in-person meeting, like what is it specifically that you're looking for as far as like their reactions to you? Well, I would back up and, and kind of address some of the things you were talking about in terms of pacing and watching people and all of that. So the, the, when you become the ultimate sale, the journeyman salesman, no one knows when you're selling and no one knows when you're not selling because you're not doing anything to get anyone. You're not trying to get anywhere. Right. This is very important. See, I care, but not that much, about potential opportunities. Right. I care deeply about my customers. But you're not my customer yet. You're just a needle in a haystack. Right. And I have to figure out if this is a needle that I can use, that a needle that I work with. It might not be a good fit. This is not what I, for example, I have mortgage lenders in your category that, you know, some of the guys I work with, you, they don't do land. Well, you know, I mean, this is going to be a waste of time to even go down that path. So I have to understand the products. Right. But the key in looking at a communication style is to remember something that most people are completely unaware of until you tell them and they're like, yeah, that makes sense. And that is 67% of communication is body language. 100%. 6% of communication is the words we use. So on the one hand, you could say, well, the words don't matter. Oh, no, because there's so few. Mm -hmm. You must get them right. You must understand what you're saying. You cannot use jargon, right? It doesn't matter. People don't understand. Remember what I said earlier. Exactly. They're not going to tell you they don't understand. Okay, so when you go fast and you use jargon and you tell them, you know, that we're going to have, I mean, I can't think of any off the top. Your right? DTI at the LTV. Is yeah, the... your APR and da 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 and your interest rate. And they don't understand the difference. There's a difference between your interest rate and APR. You lay, layperson terms. <laughs> yeah, just, it's jargon. It's jargon. It's absolutely a violation of, of the industry of sales right. and the profession to use jargon. 100%. And when you, uh, I would say to anyone who's listening that is a new salesperson, that uh, 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 enlightenment and wonderment that you came home the day after passing your real estate or your broker or whatever exam and you come home and you tell everyone, did you know this? You know, what? Well, well, the reason why this happens is because of this. And then you're speaking all in layman's terms because you don't know anything well enough to, to be all jargony yet. Never lose it. Yeah. Never lose it. And Absolutely. I'll give you a perfect example. My wife, who was in real estate law for 22 years, did an open house the first time, I think it was like in 2009 or when, no, 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 2004 was when she started. So she had an open house. She came home and she said to me, I said, how did it go? She goes, oh gosh, it was so wonderful. And I talked to these people. Of course, I'm a sales leader and I'm thinking, all I want to get to is how many leads, how many did, leads you did you get? get? <laughs> right? like, that's all. And I'm, I'm, I'm just, I don't care who you talk to. Did I don't you care get, about the backstory. <laughs> exactly. I, I just want to hear, like, I, I have this many cl potential clients. That's all. I, and so I'm listening for this. I'm not right. listening really to this blah, blah, blah. And we talked and we did this. <laughs> And so, and I said, okay, well, show me what you did. And so what she did is she told me her little story and then she pulled out a business card and she handed it to me. And she said, call me if you want to see any homes. This is what she claims. This is 2004. She claims she did this day. And I said, okay, great. Now let me do this to you. And I repeated what she did and I handed her the car at the end and I said, so give me a call if you want to see any homes. And she, and I, and she took the card and I looked at her and I go, how did that feel? How, are you buying a house with me? <laughs> yeah, no, this is what she said. I said, how did that feel? And she said, like nothing. And I said, that's what it was. I said, let me show you how to do it. And I said, did you tell them anything? Did you say, did you know that it doesn't, I mean, this is critical. Uh, did you know that it doesn't cost anything to use an agent to buy a home in California? And she said, everyone knows that. 
I said, sweetheart, we weren't always in real estate. We thought we could save money by going and find, talking to the listing agent, right. only to learn that, no, we never got a deal. We had no one representing us, essentially. Exactly. Right? I mean, don't get me wrong. I love it when our company does both ends, but I ultimately uh, am not a fan of that. Right. You know, I'm not going to turn the money down, and we're very, you know, I feel like we do it right. But ultimately, you need somebody representing you. Exactly. Okay? So she, now follow this. This is critical. A little bit of an argument and disagreement. I said, just do me a favor, try it out. So the next weekend, she did it. And thank the Lord, the first person that came in was a mortgage broker's assistant. So of course, the assumption is they know everything. When my wife said to her, did you know that it's free to use an agent in California? She said, no, I didn't know that. <laughs> and that changed it for my wife. Right. So my training was very ineffective. The, her experience was extremely effective. Right. And so what we want to do is to take this basic model of helping another person. And the way you help them is to listen to them. Mm -hmm. And when someone says to you, you should be in sales because you're so good at talking to people and nah, 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 that's your clue to stay away from sales. Exactly. Because you need to know marketing, you need to know business, you know you're gonna be running your own books, you're gonna be uh, creating promotions, you're gonna be dealing with legal and, and regulatory issues that are oh, yeah. ever evolving and you have to be in compliance or you're gonna go up to including jail. Yep. And that's where we're at today. And what people don't realize is when you get hooked up with the wrong real estate agent or the wrong mortgage broker, or as we're talking, the wrong salesperson, mm -hmm. it can be devastating. Yep. And we have stories, don't we? Absolutely. So going back, because right now, I know that you have vast experience within various sorts of businesses, right? So we, as we were talking, found out that you did credit card processing. And then more recently, just like you said, you're the broker on record. Sure. I mean, yeah. Cloud PBX, I've been involved with Telco. You know, I started Showtime in the movie channel. We started Home Shopping Network. We invented the first credit card machine that can be used on Delta Airlines to accept payments and, and, and transact. That didn't used to be able to happen. We started with seven channels in cable and went to fiber optic cable with Ted Turner and WTBS. And so I was involved in all these transitions. I brought the first technology from Shimaseki, Japan which was called the Quantel paint box system, so that we could change images live. It's something you take for granted today, you paint on your phone. And John Chaney, Art Porter, and Scott Hardy brought that technology in 1988 to America. And right. so I've been involved in a lot. We, I sent out the first video emails, and then we got shut down for spamming, because apparently you can't send 22,000 emails to people you don't know. And so <laughs> that was back in the, in the late 90s. And then a company named YouTube put a video of an elephant up on the internet, and we all know the rest of the story. Absolutely. So I've been there a few times. I've had some great things. My most... My greatest accomplishment is both of my daughters have master's degree from elite universities and were extremely uh, productive citizens. And, you know, I think the role of any parent is to make their child a productive citizen by 18. Absolutely. You don't have anything to do after 18. No, exactly. The law takes over. The law takes over, exactly. <laughs> the law takes over. And, and now your family has even transitioned into... You know, your daughter Paige is is a very top agent in top the agent. yeah. She's named a top agent in the valley. My wife is, she was the number one agent in Tarbell. That's we ended up. What we uh, I will. This is important. My wife and I ended up with a real estate company because nobody was trustworthy that we worked for. And I don't right. want to indicate, you know, Tarbell's not even around anymore. I'm not trying to point fingers or anything. But what I'm saying is, is that no one kept their word. People did things that I don't agree with, right? right? And I don't agree with tricking and, you know, there's just a lot of stuff. And the laws have tightened things up, but you can't change the fact that, you know, people will still try to convince you how honest they are. And I just run from that, right? right. So what happened was my wife's success created a lifestyle for us. Absolutely. You know, I was involved in some things. When you're involved at the high level, CEO level, there can be lawsuits and other things. And so ultimately one day we looked at each other and we said, uh-oh, we better really focus up because this is our business. Yep. This isn't a hobby for Jill anymore and something that keeps the wife making, you know, it's better than being in a law firm all day. Yeah, That's absolutely. how it happened. And so then my daughter went and got her EMBA from Pepperdine University, Paige Hardy Hill. She married 
a structural engineer and his firm, Seven Hills Engineering, works with us. My other daughter has her master's from Johns Hopkins University. She became, you know, a designer and she's now working with our firm. And then her husband has now, as you know, working with you, Absolutely. Rick Hancock, in the mortgage industry. And so what we've done is we've tried to tie all of the related businesses together to help seamlessly help you find a home or design a home, get the loan, manage the project, sell your home, or uh, remodel your home and increase the value, whether it's pool or you know just interior design. And so this has been a dream of mine, but again, it was my dream, right. and everyone else had to agree. And so I suggested it, and what I found is that the collaborative effort that I'm involved with your organization and my own family increases our efficiencies, mm -hmm. we cost less, we're faster, Mm -hmm. We sell homes faster, and we find them faster for less. And, right. and we're able to get them to you, and you come up with financing packages that we don't even know to think about. So you enhance the relationship. So I would say it this way. All of our partners are smarter than us in what they do. Right. And together, we, if, if there's five of us, that adds up to 2,500. And if I take one of those people out, it's not four it's negative four. Right. We lose. We're not as good as we could be without partnering with people like you. You know what's funny? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say one thing too. So when I started in the industry, it was the ultimate lone wolf industry. You're out for yourself. You're out to basically do things on your own. And one of the things that I started noticing is like I brought on one person. And so then we created the team, the two mortgage guys team. Right. And I was like, you know what? Like we're better strength in numbers. Right, So we would go to offices together. We would brand and advertise together. And all of a sudden, it was just like instead of this lone wolf type mentality, it's, you know. It creates energy increasing. in the marketplace. Exactly. And ultimately, what then happened is it morphed into a place where, you know, now there's up to 12 loan officers and you know, two processors, three operations staff. Well, this is a this is a podcast, and everyone, no one will believe that I don't have a motive to promote us, mm -hmm. okay? And I want to do that through just, education. But I want all of our listeners to understand that I am extremely critical of sales processes. My gift is arrangement. Mm -hmm. You know, I write music. I do, you know, I, I'm the arranger. I'm the drummer. I'm the singer for the band. I arrange the music, okay? I don't know how to write music, but I know that Gartard needs to go sooner or later or whatever, right? So when I observed your organization, and this is critical for our listeners, uh, that if they knew who I was, they would know how important this is, that I've been through one mortgage broker after another for the last 20 years. Years. I, have, I have been uh, disappointed. Um, I was involved with a recruiting effort to find mortgage brokers that generated $100 million a year. Only. I was only allowed, I was an executive. We only called on them for a large national company. So I got to see how they operated. I was just not impressed. I was shocked that they could even do this much business. I didn't know how half of them even found their way to their office in the morning. There was no <laughs> consistency. And I was very disappointed. I found people lied to me. I felt people did not keep their word, which I'm big on. They didn't communicate with what I call the Holy Trinity. Mm -hmm. The Holy Trinity is your escrow officer. It's the person taking out the loan that's trying to buy the house. And it's the real estate agent to put the deal together. Yep. And these people just did not have the ability through the technology or anything. And so we had, I'll just say we had a problem with one of your guys and you took care of it swiftly. And you showed me that you share the same value system. And that was important to me. I mean, you're going to approach things different. You have a different personality, you know, your professional golfer background, all that. I was just a hack motocross jumper who, you know, <laughs> was a terrible lander, you know, right. and, and so, you know, a, an unpaid amateur stunt man my right. whole life. Right. And I have the injuries to show for it. But what I saw and this is important for everyone, is I saw the first company that did it the way I believe it should be done, which is they don't worry about their competition, they worry about their customers. Right. And when you have a problem with your customer, you fixed it for all your customers. You didn't just like fix the one thing and then keep having the same, problem. The same problem. And as a result of that, everyone needs to understand that my son-in-law, who was you know, an Olympian swimmer, coach, everything, chose your company over all the companies in the United States. Right. That made it convenient because now they move back to the Temecula Valley and grandma's very happy. Good. Right. <laughs>